Bismillah, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Salatu Salam, Ala Rasulillah, Wa Ala Ali Sahim Wala, Amma Bad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatu. How's everybody doing? Alhamdulillah. So today, inshallah ta'ala, we begin a new journey, Surah Infitar. Well, it has a few names. The most common is uh, Surah Al Infitar. Another name is Surah Ida Sama Un Fatara, Ida Sama Un Fatara. And another, surah, uh, another name of it is Surah Al Munfatira. This is a surah that has 19 ayat by يعني, uh, bil ijma, it's a, it's a bil ittifaq, it's a consensus. And it is Mecki, it's a Mecki surah. And in terms of the order of revelation, it's the 82nd surah in terms of order of revelation, which is interesting because it's also the 82nd surah in terms of the order of the Quran. I have no idea if that's significant. I have no idea if any other surahs like that. It seems like a very, we know that the vast majority are not like that, right? Uh, we, uh, we don't, uh, you know, like Baqarah wasn't number two in the list, et cetera. You know, it wasn't like that. So you don't, you don't find that that's a normal thing. But the fact that it's 82 and 82 is just an interesting match, and Allah knows best. This surah in particular has no commands. There is no uh, amr. You don't find that the Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands uh, in this surah at all. There are some questions in ayah number uh, 6, 17, and 18. So three different questions in this surah. In terms of uh, Allah ta'ala being referenced, Allah ta'ala is mentioned uh, as Rabbik al Karim. Uh, your generous master in ayah number six, and as the name of Allah, Lafzul Jalala, Allah, Wal Amru Yom Aidin Lillah, right? That the affair is to Allah. In the, in fact, the last word of the surah in ayah number nineteen, the last word is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, is Lafzul Jalala. Now, in terms of correlation with the previous surah, we know that both both surahs begin with the mention of stars, Kawakib and Nujum, and we can talk about that later. What the difference is there. Uh, the, the previous surah, by the way, is surah 81, which is surah taqweer. And so, yeah, they both begin with stars. They both begin, they both mention the seas, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the ocean. They both mention what alimat uh, nafsun, what the, what the soul will know, right? Alimat nafsun ma ahdarat and alimat nafsun ma qadamat wa akharat, right? So these two different ayat that are often mixed up when people are re, uh, standing in salah, they, they switch between these and you have to be careful of that. And they also have um, a very interesting correlation in terms of Surah 81, Surah Taqweer, as it's coming to its conclusion in ayah number 26, Allah asks a very powerful question. فَأَيْنَ تَدْهَبُونَ Where are you going? Right, very simple and powerful question. Where do you think you're going in your life? And where do you think all this is headed? And then in the very next surah, Allah describes exactly where you're going. Right, so the next surah is surah 82, which is what we're dealing with, surah infitar. And it tells you what's, where, where you're headed towards judgment day, which is, which is exactly what is described. And furthermore, it's interesting how both surahs end. Both of them end with powerlessness. One in terms of uh, in the akhirah and one in terms of dunya. In terms of the akhirah, this surah, ayah number 19, the final ayah, ends with what? يَوْمَ لَا تَمْلِكُ نَفْسٌ لِنَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لِلَّهِ That Allah Ta'ala has mentioned that, look, on that day, no soul will, or no person will have any power over another. Basically, you'll be powerless on that day. And everything's going to belong to Allah. Allah's going to have full control on that day. So you will be powerless on judgment day. And then in the last ayah of surah 81, which is surah taqweer, Allah says what? وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَن يَشَاءَ الله رب العالمين. That you cannot will except if Allah wills. So in this dunya, you don't have true power. What you do is only by the permission of Allah. And in the next life, you'll have no power whatsoever. Allah Ta'ala is in full control. So it's very interesting how both of these surahs, they pair up in terms of their beginning, in terms of their ending, and in terms of the way they flow into one another. SubhanAllah, it's very interesting. And in terms of the, just this series of surahs, you find that there's a very big emphasis on angels. In Surah Naba, we find that uh, Jibreel and all the angels will be standing in rows, as Allah mentions in ayah number 38. Then in Surah uh, uh, Nazi'at, right after that, you find from ayat 1 to 5, Allah is talking about the various roles that the angels have in terms of uh, you know, taking out the ruh from the soul. In Nazi'ati, gharqa, you know, taking out the uh, different souls from the bodies. In Surah 80, which is Surah Abasa, Allah talks about uh, the Quran being preserved by noble angels. And then in Surah 81, which is Surah Taqweer, Allah talks about what? Jibreel delivering the revelation. That's ayat 19 to 23. And then here in this Surah, we're going to find that Allah Ta'ala mentions what? From ayat 10 to 12, how the angels record all the deeds. So you see this theme from one Surah to the next, all talking about the different functions that angels have. It's really quite interesting. And furthermore, it's also interesting that this ayah, the central ayah of this Surah, which we're going to talk about in a moment, the central ayah of this Surah, uh, uh, is ayah number 9 in which Allah Ta'ala says Kalla bal No, you are denying this deen And then you might ask the question, what are they denying? Well, the previous surah went into it in detail where in ayah, uh, As it was finishing in surah al-Takweer Ayah number 22, Allah says that no, he is not mad Because they were accusing him of being majnoon, crazy uh, In ayah number 24, Allah is refuting that the Prophet Sallallahu withheld information 
Bilbonin, he's, he's withholding information. No, that's not true. So these are all the denials. These are all the rejections that they are offering up. Ayah number 25, Allah Ta'ala refutes that the Prophet's words are from uh, I mean, a shaitan, from a, from, a, uh, from a shaitan regime. And then ayah number 29, Allah refutes that the disbelievers are in full control. So these are just some connections you can see very clearly between these two surahs. Now in terms of the breakdown, I want you to pay attention to this because this is really quite amazing. This surah has 19 ayat. Okay, now we're going to leave aside you know, all the, the, the context of various surahs. We're going to, just going to stick to this surah itself. This surah, surah Infitar, surah 82. It, you can break it down in five parts. And as is in a ring, ring structure, I hope everybody's familiar at this point, the ring structure implies what? That if you have five parts, number one and number five correlate, number two and number four correlate, and then number three would be the center, the center concept. So when you pay attention to this surah, subhanAllah, it's really quite beautiful and remarkable that what you find is ayat one to five are a description of judgment day where you will be in this dunya, but everything will be unraveling. Everything will be completely out of your control. You're going to be watching this world fall apart, right? That's the first part, ayat one to five. Then if you go to the ending, ayat 17, 18, and 19, the last part, is all about description of judgment day, completely out of your control, where Allah Ta'ala mentions what? You will not have any control whatsoever. So you have this parallel between you will see a time in this life where you have no control and everything's out of your control and falling apart. And then there will be a time in the akhirah where you'll be, you'll be resurrected and you'll realize I have no control whatsoever. So there's this correlation between the first and the last part. Then when you get closer, the second portion is ayat 6 to 8. And from ayat 6 to 8 what you find is that Allah Ta'ala is describing His precision in what you see. Specifically, your design. You know, Allah Ta'ala is, we're going to go into the, those ayat inshallah in more detail. Allah is saying what? O oh, human being, what has deluded you? That from your generous Lord who has constructed you and put you together and designed you in, in, in a special way, in this beautiful way, in this generous way. So this is describing Allah's precision with regards to what you see. That's from ayat 6 to 8. But then part 4 is what? From ayat 10 to 16. Where Allah Ta'ala is describing the precision of the unseen. So, one was the precision of what you see, now Allah is saying about the precision of what you don't see. As in, the precision of having angels that keep your records. And the precision of the good people being rewarded and the bad people being punished. Ayat uh, 10 to 16 are what? وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ كِرَامًا كَاتِبِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا تَفْعَلُونَ إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ إِبْنَ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٌ وَإِنَّ الْفُجَارَ لَفِي جَحِيمٌ يَصْلَوْنَهَا يَوْمَ دِينٌ وَمَا هُمْ عَنْهَا بِغَائِبِينَ So you can't get out of it. There's no escaping it. Everybody gets exactly what they deserve. It is extremely precise, but that's in the unseen realm. So you guys see the parallel, right? Both of them have to do with precision. One is in the seen realm and the other one is in the unseen realm. So that's parts one correlating to five, part two correlating to four. So what is the center? There was only one thing missing, which was I number nine. I number nine, kalla bal You know, the only problem is you're denying all this. How can you deny this? You're going to see when you're out of control and then in judgment day, you're going to also be out of control. You're going to see the precision of my creation and you don't, you, there's so much precision you don't even see. You don't see the angels and how precise they're getting every little detail. You know, the problem is you're denying both. The seen and unseen world, you're just denying all of it. That's the center concept. What a powerful surah, subhanAllah. I mean, can you appreciate? Maybe you've memorized the surah for, I don't know, 20 years of your life, and you're like, subhanAllah, you know, I never realized that. Look at this. Look at the way this is put together. This Qur'an is different. SubhanAllah. And we do this, I mean, I do this, I try to do this every single surah, right? I try to show that there's this ring structure going on, and that there's these layers of it. And SubhanAllah, it's just amazing. Every single time, if you pay attention, you just, you, the Qur'an never stops. Uh, what's, the, what's the expression? Bahrun la sahila It's a ocean that has no shores. Anyway, the Prophet says what? Man sarrahu an yanzura ila yom al qiyamati ka'annahu ra'yu aynin fal yakra ida shamsu kuwirat wa ida sama un tatarat wa ida sama un shakat. That whoever wishes to look at the day of resurrection as if he's seeing it with his eyes, then let him recite basically Surah Takwir, which is 81, Surah Infitar, Surah 82, and Surah Inshiqaq, which is Surah 84. So these three, it's, you get to uh, appreciate and get a vision and a, and, a, and a glimpse as to Judgment Day and what it's going to be. Yes, in terms of surahs that have uh, 19 ayat, this, this surah has 19 ayat, similar to Surah Al-Alaq and Surah uh, Infitar. Oh, excuse me, Surah Al-A'la. Infitar, A'la, and Alaq. These three are the only three surahs that have 19 ayat. And that's, I just thought that's an interesting point. So anyway, inshallah ta'ala, let's get into the first ayah. Allah ta'ala says, بَعْدِ عَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فَطَرَتْ when the sky breaks apart. So the first thing we want to remember is that we want to start with sincerity. Since we don't know when this will happen, the believer lives with the reality that this could happen at any time. 
That's the concept, that we are not listening to this or reading these ayat or paying attention during the salah, thinking that we're listening to science fiction, right? Oh, this is a great story about how this happened and the good guys and the bad guys and the hero came. And, you know, this isn't, this isn't some sort of, you know, show or movie or whatever the case is. This is, you go outside, you look up at the sky and say, yep, I'm going to witness that day. It could be tomorrow, it could be in a very long time from now, but the point is that this is something that I'm going to see. And so Allah Ta'ala is describing this, so we have to read them with the understanding that this is a description of a future that we will experience, and that moment could be either sooner or later. The verb in fatara yanfatiru, in fitaran, means to be torn across its length. Uh, Wallahu Ta'ala Alam, the, uh, the explanation that I came across was in fatara is when something has a big crack at the beginning, and in shaqqa is when it then shatters. You know, so let's say if you, uh, you, you see sometimes glass gets hit and the first big crack goes through it and then it just busts, right? So, wallahu alam, it seems that this is, these are two stages, right? One is the big crack and then after that you see it completely just shattered. Wallahu alam. Um, so yes, the sky will be ripped on the Day of Judgment and to describe it, Allah Ta'ala uses this verb in fatara and the only other time that this verb or this, this, this uh, in fatara term is used is when Allah Ta'ala says, it's in the fa'il pattern, is when Allah Ta'ala says what? As-sama'u munfatirun bih kana wa'aduhu maf'ula in Surah uh, Muzammil, ayah number 18. The heavens or the sky will break apart therefrom, ever is his promise fulfilled. So again, this, this, this term or this, the, this uh, pattern of in, uh, in fatara is, or this word is in fatara is only used twice and you find that both times it's in reference to the sky cracking apart. Now what's interesting is what does the sky represent to the believer. Well, Allah Ta'ala makes it pretty clear that it's a source of physical sustenance. It's a source of rain. You look up to the sky, you see that, you know, alhamdulillah, rain is coming down from the sky. You could even say sunshine coming down from the sky. It's a source of rizq, uh, Allah, as Allah Ta'ala mentions, It is he who sends down the rain from the sky. Uh, from it, it is, uh, it, it, there is drink, and from it is foliage, as in vegetation, in which the pat, your pasture animals eat. So when it comes to humans, animals, when it comes to uh, plants, all this is benefiting from the sky, so it represents a source of rizq. Furthermore, it's not just a physical s source of rizq, but also a spiritual one. As Allah Ta'ala multiple times mentions how revelation comes from the sky. As Allah says, نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ That he has sent down upon you this book in truth. So coming down from the sky is revelation. So you have the physical and the spiritual, both sustenance coming down from the sky in the form of revelation, in the form of rain, or in the form of sunlight. All this we're benefiting from as human beings. And now Allah Ta'ala is saying, what? This sky is going to be destroyed. What is this signal? This signals the end of the physical life and the end of the test of life. Both are going, your, your physical life will end, and then the test of life is going to end as well. And so that's what it's signaling. Why is it that there are so many ayat about the destruction of the sky, whether it be in Surah Infitar at the beginning, or Surah uh, uh, Takwir as we mentioned, or Surah Inshiqaq as we mentioned, and many other ayat that mention, like I mentioned Surah Muzammil, there's also some ayat in uh, Surah Anbiya, etc. Why is this, the destruction of the sky referenced so many times in the Quran? Perhaps because it is the biggest creation we're aware of. So when you focus on the biggest thing being destroyed, you realize, okay, this is serious. It's the biggest thing that I am aware of. Yes. Now, in terms of uh, 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 Allah's description, uh, this is descri his descript Allah Ta'ala's description of the sky being destroyed is in clear contrast to the fact that Allah Ta'ala des de designed this sky in a flawless way. As Allah says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ سَبْعَ سَمَاوَاتٍ طِبَاقًا مَا تَرَى فِي خَلْقِ الرَّحْمَانِ مِنْ تَفَاوَتْ فَرْجِعِ الْبَصَرَ هَلْ تَرَى مِنْ فُطُورٍ It is he who created the seven heavens in layers. You do not see in the creation of the most merciful any inconsistency. You don't see any cracks or fissures. That's what makes this day so special, that you look up at the sky and you see a consistent, uniform universe. So return your vision to the sky. Do you see any breaks in it? Uh, so then return your vision twice again. Your vision will return to you humbled while it is fatigued. You can try over and over again, and you're only going to be more and more appreciative and amazed at the design of this universe. And, you know, uh, there's many physicists that have studied, you know, the Big Bang cosmology and, and the, 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 con uh, the, the constants of the universe and how uh, finely tuned everything is. And they said there has to be a creator. All the constants have been, you could say, quote unquote, monkey wrenched, or what's, excuse me, um, uh, what's it called, played with, or, or there's been somebody who, 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 who uh, you know, turned the dials to make everything uh, perfect. So subhanAllah, this must be uh, something unique. Now, why is it that the sky is cracking? There's a few possibilities. Uh, uh, one is because the angels, the angels will be busting through. As Allah Ta'ala says, 
وَيَوْمَ تَشَقَّقُ السَّمَاءُ بِالْغَمَامِ وَنُزِّلَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ تَنْزِيلًا And mention the day when the heavens will be split open with emerging clouds and the angels will be sent down in successive descent. So one factor could be that even though the unseen realm has up until this point been unseen, it, the, the day will come when what happens? The angels will say, we're not going to be unseen anymore. We will break through and we will become apparent in this reality and then the disbelievers will be shocked and see that the sky is being ripped open and angels are coming through and this is obviously snatching of the souls and establishing judgment day. So that's, uh, 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 yes, one possibility. Um, the second, and, uh, and of course this surah goes into and talks about how the angels are recording your deeds. You don't see that, but you will see them when they sh finally show up. Now in terms of a second possibility, it could be out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the sky, out of its fear of Allah, it simply has to break at a certain point. And wallahu ta'ala alam, you could even correlate this with the fact that shirk is such a weighty thing, is such an abhorrent thing. To disrespect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so terrible that the universe itself wants to reject it. You know when you see something so horrible and, and you say, you know, like, I don't know, you see the suffering of people around the world and you say to yourself, you know, maybe, you know, people say, where's the comet? You know, maybe, maybe we should just get wiped out. You know, maybe, maybe, the, you know, send the rain, send the floods. You know, maybe it should be like the time of Nuh alayhi salam. Just, just get rid of humanity. If this is who we are, if this is how bad we are, maybe we deserve to all just be extinct. Uh, sometimes you have that terrible thought, let's say, that, 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 that negative feeling. And it's somewhat natural because you think, look at what we've done with free will. And this is the same thought that the angels had, uh, asking Allah Ta'ala, why are you going to put people on earth if they're just going to create fasad fil ard? And they're just going to uh, shed blood. And so the sky feels the same way. As Allah says, that Allah says, and they say the most merciful has taken a son. You have done an atrocious thing. The heavens almost rupture therefrom, and the earth splits open, and the mountains collapse in devastation. In other words, the world doesn't want to take this type of disrespect to its creator. The, the universe itself doesn't rejects this, 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 this terrible crime of rejecting the creator and uh, uh, doing shirk. And so subhanAllah, it could be that because the world will be full of so much shirk and so much evil that Tawheed will no longer be on earth anymore, this is what's going to start Qiyamah. This is what's going to make the, 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 the heavens say enough is enough. If there's not even a single believer left, then we just need to self-destruct. And this is confirmed by the hadith in which the Prophet says what? لا تقوم الساعة حتى لا يقال في, في الأرض الله الله As is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet says what? The hour will not occur until it is not no longer said on earth Allah Allah. In other words, Tawheed and the concept of worshipping one God, it will slowly, near the end of time, slowly go away until nobody is practicing Tawheed and the whole world is upon this kind of shirk and that will ultimately result in the universe um, uh, unraveling and collapsing in and of itself. Then Allah Ta'ala says, what? And I'll, I'll finish with this ayah inshallah. وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ إِنْتَثَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ إِنْتَثَرَتْ That Allah Ta'ala says, and when the stars fall scattering. So what does that mean? What's the difference, first of all, with kawakib and nujum? As Allah Ta'ala mentions, وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ right? So Allah mentions in the previous surah, in surah 81, uh, ayah number 2, that the stars will uh, uh, fall and be dispersing. It, so the difference is, a najm is something that has brilliance. It refers to its light. And therefore, Allah Ta'ala talking about it falling and becoming dark is more fitting with that context. So the contrast there is more fitting. Whereas kawkab is a term that highlights something that is large, not just a, a, a star, but it could also be like a planet. Uh, and it's something that represents something large and a fixture, something that has a fixed nature, something that is used for navigation, something that is placed firmly. And so it is more, uh, me, it is more fitting uh, when the theme is talking about falling out of its position. Why? because the fixed position of the stars are used for guidance. That's how people would navigate themselves. They would look up to the, scars, to the stars and they would, see this, uh, they would see in the sky how to navigate themselves, you know, north, east, west, and south. And this is mentioned as well as Allah Ta'ala mentions in Surah 56, which is Surah Al-Waqi'ah, Ayat 75 to 77. So them scattering represents utter chaos because the scattering of the most stable, stable symbol in an otherwise uh, uh, uncertain world signals sheer panic. And it also signals that the end, uh, the end of the test, because the need for guidance uh, is over. There's no need for guidance. It's all over. There's no time for repentance. It's all finished anyhow. So yeah, there are many terms for uh, dispersion, whether it's uh, in fadda or in tashara or in betha. But Allah Ta'ala used what? In tethara. In tethara 
coming from the root letters of nun, tha, and ra, only occur three times in the Qur'an. And what they refer to is when something is scattered on the ground and, and kind of dispersed. You can imagine like, like a, whether you have like a handful of uh, marbles or something and you just scatter it on the ground, something, something thrown down. And so the question is, does this mean that the stars will be thrown down towards Earth? Or the, I shouldn't say stars, I should say the heavenly bodies, whether they be stars or whether they be comets or whether they be pieces of different planets all cracking up and then flying towards Earth. So some say, no, this has nothing to do with coming towards the Earth. It just refers to scattering. So you'll see things going completely out of orbit, and that will be a signal to panic. Or another opinion, opinion is what? That Allah Ta'ala Allah Ta is indirectly making a reference to the fact that he is above the heavens. So the idea of them going out of orbit is kind of like, yes, I am throwing down. Obviously, this is وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى Obviously, Allah is above this. But it's just an indication, or, or you could say like a, um, you know, um, a figurative speech, that they're going out of whack and being thrown, or they're completely going out of orbit and they're being thrown down. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala is above and beyond the seven heavens. And so that sort of, that, that concept of throwing down, in, in a way, in a metaphorical sense, you could say, applies. And the last one is that, yes, because the heavenly bodies will be shooting towards the earth. And by the way, this makes a lot of sense when you think about the idea that Allah Ta'ala in the next ayat, which I'm not going to get into today, but Allah Ta'ala speaks about how the bihar, biharu fujirat, how the oceans are going to, could mean to bubble up and boil up and to light on fire, or it could mean just to spread out so much that all of the, uh, that it will, it will flood the lands. Now, I'm sure we've all heard or seen, you know, these type of uh, apocalypse movies where they say that a gigantic meteor is going to hit the ocean, right? And then that's going to cause gigantic tidal waves, and those waves are going to cover the planet, and it's going to cause all sorts of extreme boiling and heat flashes that's going to uh, boil up all of the oceans, and it's going to cause all, all these issues. So, wallahu ta'ala alam, it seems like this is what's being described, that, the, that the, the heavenly bodies are going out of orbit, the sky is ripping, this, certain things are flying towards the earth, and then these meteors are smashing into the oceans and causing this gigantic flooding and also this type of, you could say, this, this burning up of, of the planet. Uh, and Allah Ta'ala knows best. Um, oh yeah, last point, inshallah, last point, I apologize. So the root letters of Nun, Tha, and Ra only occur three times. Look at the context, it's very interesting. One of them is for the disbelievers and their, their deeds being scattered and useless. وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْ ثُورًا That, and we will regard what they have done of their deeds and make them as dispersed dust. The disbeliever, why? Because he did all of his good deeds for the sake of the wrong cause. He didn't do it for the sake of Allah, let's say he did it for some idol. He goes on judgment day, I want some reward. The idol's like, uh, useless, right? So subhanAllah, it's هَبَاءً مَنْ ثُورًا, dispersed. The next one is what? وَيَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ وِلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ إِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ Allah Ta'ala mentions in Surah Insan, ayah number 19, there will circulate among them young, uh, young boys made eternal. When you see them, you would think them as beautiful as scattered pearls. So Allah Ta'ala is referring to what? Your servants in paradise. Now the believer is sitting and looking at his dominion, mulkan kabira. He's looking at his, 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 his palaces. He's looking at all his dominion and his gardens and etc. And then he sees all these servants and they look like scattered pearls. So one context is what? The disbeliever, your deeds are like dust scattered. The believer, all of your servants, they're like pearls scattered. And then the last one is what? وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ كَوَاكِبُ إِنْ تَثَرَتْ And when the stars are following out of this dunya and they are looking completely scattered. So subhanAllah, you can't invest in this dunya materialism and you can't invest in false gods, whether it be different idols, you have to invest in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that seems to be the uh, uh, emphasis here, wallahu alam, that that's the three times you find this interesting word of oh, noon thara or nathara or in tathara, etc. Wallahu ta'ala alam bis sawab. Inshallah ta'ala will continue next week uh, from ayah 3 moving forward. Jamdala khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.